ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, species around the multiverse, welcome to episode 298 of Geek Syndicate. I am, as ever, on Monts, and with me, as ever, is... Old Man Nuge. Old Man Nuge. Have you, <laughs> have you been reading Old Man Logan? What, the, 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 the new one? Yeah, we just... Only because... Um, I was like, I was just, I was walking past a comic shop the other day and I saw a comic called Old Man Hawkeye or something like that. And I was like, what? Are they just going to do a whole run now of old man comics? <laughs> I'm waiting for like um, old lady Black Widow. <laughs> yeah. Or just old lady black if you want to start a whole, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> old black lady. <laughs> Who's that? It's an old black lady. Yeah, well, obviously, I it was my birthday not long ago, so um, I'm marching towards the big five zero. So I'm just you know, let me start to work on a few names because obviously I'm planning to be a hermit, Obi Wan style. You got a robe with a hood. I do have a robe with a hood. It's a dressing gown, oh, cool. but I can work with that. Yeah, you didn't have to tell people that. You could have just carried it. Yeah, but to be honest, it will be ten years from now before I go full hermit. So by that time, people won't know. <laughs> before I go full hermit. It's the title of your comic. <laughs> what a fool, Hermit. Huge. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened to the Nuge? Haven't you heard? He's gone full Hermit. <laughs> Someone just comes up to me. I'm just in the middle of some wasteland. And I go, where's the fight? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Story's right in itself. Yeah. So we're back, people. We've been on high. It's for a little while. Um, oh yeah, I had a baby. Yeah, yeah, the baby. Um, I had a birthday. It's not quite the same. Nah, not quite. You know, <laughs> there was a lot less screaming for a start. For what, one of us had a life changing event, and the other person had a baby. Zing! Oh, see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, ding. I'm, I'm here a week. Don't forget to tip your waiter. Yeah, try the lab <laughs> <laughs> with prosecco. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's been a while. I need to oil the old geek gears, man. Yeah, you'll be both. That's why I've got some double cask um, whiskey. I forgot what it is. All right, I've got. <laughs> I've got. I've got a cup of hot water. All right. I've also got a cup of Earl Grey as well. I could. I couldn't. I couldn't go full whiskey. I was like, for whiskey, uh, just a touch with a cup of tea, please. <laughs> So that would be the sequel then, Full Whiskey Months. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? it's, like, it's like someone gets Full Hermit Nuge to tell him where the fight is and Full Hermit Nuge has to go and get Full Whiskey full whiskey Months out of the gutter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, we've been rambling long enough. So let's yeah, sorry, on. that's got, all for us. None of that was for you. None of that was for you. That was all for us. So uh, you got your shout outs? Uh, to Sally Davies, who got me this whiskey. Okay. As, yeah. <laughs> you have a baby people feel like they've got to get you stuff I'm all good with that hey I haven't got you anything yet it's alright obviously, <laughs> obviously yet implies I was actually going to get you stuff which yeah I, I was going to say I was, I was a bit I was a bit like that's what I paused like the yet I was like what yeah, that doesn't sound like you yeah I thought I'd better walk that one back <laughs> yeah okay. Um. yeah shout outs I want to give uh, two quick shout outs because you've got a lot to get through uh, first shout out um goes out to all our uh, Patreon subscribers because you will know by now that we have um, shut down the Patreon page uh, this week. Mm. Um, the main reason for doing that was because, obviously, it's been a little while since we put an episode out and both Dave and I are sort of struggling to find the time to basically do everything. <laughs> to do anything, Joe. Anything, um, yeah. And, you know, we talked about it. And we did talk about whether or not we needed to, you know, shut down GS, as it were. But we said no, you know, um, it's very important to us. And what we decided is just try, try to get back to basics. The most important thing is, is that we put out a podcast for you, lovely ladies and gents. Mm. So, and because we weren't really doing bonus um content for Patreon as we promised we would and other stuff we just felt it just wasn't right to kind of you know take people's money on the regs as they say um, <laughs> so we decided to sort of uh, suspend suspend the Patreon page for now however if people still want to leave you know sending a one-off donation you know for uh, to keep the podcast going 
feel free, you can still do that at our PayPal, which is the same as our email address, so we'll do that at the end. But yeah, so I just want to say big love and big thanks to everyone who's kind of contributed uh, via Patreon, because actually what that's meant is we've now got enough funds that we will be able to keep the the website flow and keep the podcast podcasting <laughs> podcasting yep. uh hosting afloat so thanks yeah much appreciated we, but we will be back we will be back like, on the regs yeah. at some point at some point yeah probably uh and my other shout out goes to uh side de torn mm. Mm. what yeah why are we giving side de torn a shout out dave because we were talking about like, about sort of writing a, a trailer for us for our action movie, a what's a new action movie. So I only went and did it, the crazy bastard, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, so B was like, "Yeah, I'll send it to you." I looked at him, I couldn't find it. And he's going, "You got to read it." I said, "Well, you need to send it to me." You sent it to me again. And I'm like, okay, I'm all over this, man. We got to find time. I know we're talking about struggling to find time, but we got to find time to record this. Yeah. So, so at some stage, we will be doing a trailer for our, our audio, our audio drama. Well, drama implies it's going to be some acting. Dramatic. <laughs> yeah. And there will be some acting. On, certainly, there'll be fifty percent worth of acting. And just me, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> reading off a script, shall we? But yeah, so we're going to try and do this, and then uh, once we do it, uh, I'm going to try and put some uh, some effects in and whatnot on there, and then stick it on the stick on the cast for you folks to listen to. Yeah, cool. Size size also said if we if we like it, he may well write us an episode. That's what he said. Oh, you could all over that. Do you know what? I've got a host of voiceover people who wouldn't be who wouldn't mind putting their voices to something like that. Okay. Well, then we need to. I think what we should do is um, maybe just record our. I just won't be as good. Maybe record our lines separately on Skype. Maybe to begin with. Nah. Let's find the time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> right. Should we crack on? Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah, so here's my rant, and it's just that I'm pretty disgusted with um, with fandom at the moment. Again, again, I just don't understand. What, uh, anyway, Kenny Marie, Marie Tran um, was in the latest Star Wars film, The Last Jedi, mm-hmm. and do you know what I mean? We could debate the character. Personally, I loved her character. I loved the way she played it. I didn't see the point of her character, and just like John Boyega's character in this movie, they didn't really achieve anything um and in my mind i'm pretty vexed because i think they were both sidelined but um i could go into more i just think and i won't i won't because that's not what this is about Mm -hmm. because regardless of all of that i thought she was pretty awesome as an actress and and i thought she played her part really well regardless even if you don't like her role as rose tico um you mean she was given what she was written and she was doing if you don't like it That's your business. But people have harassed her on social media for months about it. Proper harassed her, harassed her looks, uh, everything. I saw some right wing arsehole on Facebook. And um, it was it. I think the quote was um, Battlestar Galactica Asians versus Last Jedi Asians. And and it had a picture of um, what's her name? Boomer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then a picture of Kit. Yeah. Grace Park and a picture of Kelly Marie Tran said something like, oh, look, it looks like they forgot to hide the emergency rations in the resistance because obviously Kelly Marie Tran's a little bigger than Grace Park. And I'm like, what the actual hell is wrong with people? This woman came in, did a job, did a pretty good job as far as I'm concerned, whether you like the writing or not, whether you like the movie or not, the hell are you harassing her for? If you want to harass the writer because you don't like the character, then go harass the writer. Even that should be doing. What are you repping that she come and did her job? And you, this is why we can't have good things. <laughs> I mean, I saw this today. Interestingly, what what people say. So, you know, it's a fact that she got months of that she she'd been harassed for months, right? That part of it is a fact, but no one's no one's confirmed. The reason she's deleted her Instagram account or social media account is because of the harassment. Okay. So just make that kind of clear. However, 
these articles are kind of opened it up a bit for me because I was looking around and obviously I saw some of the stuff that was being posted about and stuff like that. I remember seeing a lot of this stuff when the last year they came out. Mm. Um, and I'm just like, for me, what I, now I'm a geek, I'm a, I'm a fan, you know, um, I love, I love what I love, you know, um, very, and I'm very passionate about what I love. That's why we've been doing a podcast for over 10 years. Um, but this might be an uncomfortable statement, but I'm going to make it, but I don't own these things. You know what I'm saying? It's a sense of ownership. Like, like, yeah. Yeah, I, I can say now. I can I can sit here and I can go. I didn't enjoy this about the last Jedi, or I liked that about the last Jedi. But to be honest, that's kind of where it ends. Because it ain't your story. Because it's, it's a story you've decided to enjoy or not. But it ain't your story. You know what? If you are one of them adults who's saying that because the last Jedi was shit, it ruined your childhood. You need to grow the fuck up. Because your childhood, your childhood's still there. Do you know what I mean? Star Wars never slapped you around the head and abused you every day. That wasn't Star Wars. Yeah, that was someone else. Look, at the end of the day, right, people are entitled to not like something. So let's make that clear. You know what I'm saying? People are entitled to not like something. If you didn't enjoy a film, book, TV show, whatever, you're entitled to say you didn't like it. You're entitled to say it was rubbish, whatever. We've done, this, we've done that plenty of times. Um, however... You don't own that property. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm not going to get on the phone to Ryan Johnson and go, look, mate, you don't know me, but I've just come out as I've just come out of Last Jedi and I've got some stuff to tell you. So holy noise, because next hour is going to be a bumpy ride, Ryan. Do you know what I mean? And he's going to sit there and listen to me and then go, you know what, bro? I hadn't seen, you made some good points. You know what? I've made some notes. So when I come to do my trilogy, I'm going to take that on board. It's, yeah. it's nonsense. It's nonsense. We both know as creative people, but at the end of the day, when you do something creative, and you, you create something, you put it out there, to a certain extent, it no longer becomes yours. You know what I'm saying? You, you, know, you write a book yeah. or you do a performance or whatever. It goes out there. You, know? you, you can't control it anymore. You can't control what people say about that. And I understand that. But I just think people just need to just calm down. Do you know what? Uh, okay, so I'm going to come clean here. And this is the reason why I say you've got to grow up. Because a long time ago, in a galaxy not that far away, when we started a podcast and we'd review certain comics uh, or certain TV shows, you go back and listen. There are episodes that I'm not proud of. Yeah, yeah, likewise. But do you know what happened? We grew up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, so all of you, you're just you're just you're just nailing your maturity loud and clearly to the wall. If you carry on like that, just I just uh, just I, I, I don't know. Because my thing is then, why would anybody want to do anything new? Why would anyone want to do anything courageous or produce stuff? Because you're like, I'm just too scared. Yeah. And I think was it as someone said, um, what's her name, Daisy Ridley quit social media for very similar reasons but then i remember in in a real kind of bringing it back around and i think the statute of limitations is passed now and in the a's and stuff but i remember back in the day you were up for game of thrones weren't you yeah you were up for the swords syrio for um syrio for yeah. is that his name i think so yeah um and i remember you ringing me up because you were saying to me it was you know i mean you're in. You're, it wasn't just you're up for it. You you had a good chance, you know. Mm, um, yeah. But I remember you saying to me at the time you were worried about the potential back the backlash because it you, being, you because of being a black being a black guy, being, yeah cast in that role. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, let alone before you even get onto social media and stuff like that, you know. So yeah, it's I, I, I tell you what. Well, the, well, I had a had an audition last week for a pretty big film which I uh, had to sign an NDA, so I can't talk about it. But I have to admit, while I was going for the audition, I was like, I was like, you know what? If I, if I get this role, I'm putting myself out there for people to destroy, why is that the first thing that should be going through my head, going for something which should be a joy? Yeah. I'll come back to where I started. This is why we can't have good things. <laughs> 
Yeah, anyway. On, on that note, she we would get that, get that get that off my chest. Just, just let's be, let's let's talk nice stuff. Let's talk nice stuff. Can I I wanna I wanna hail up I wanna hail up Netflix. Before we do Netflix, you got the comics, because we never do comics. Comics? I've read one I've managed to read one comic. Me too. What was yours while I look up mine? Um so I've read um I sort of binged it. Binge if that's the word you can use for comics these days. Yeah, I um, did that too. Athena Voltaire and the Sorcerer Pope. Oh, do you know what? I haven't read an Athena Voltaire comic in years. I used to love that. Yeah, this has come from Action Lab Entertainment and uh, this is written by Stephen Bryant, arts by Ismail Can- Canales. Sorry if I've got that wrong. Um, and, and Steve Bryant's kind of like the writer creator. <laughs> And basically, Athena Voltaire is just full on one hundred percent adventure pulp, like Indiana Jones. Um, people say Lara Croft, but I, but I would firmly put this much more towards your Indiana Jones, your Rocketeer. Mm. It's set in the sort of thirties, thirties, forties as well. And the blurb for this this one is. Um, Collecting the first ongoing adventures of comics' favourite pulp heroine, Athena races against the Nazis, of course, to find the artefact once possessed by Pope Sylvester II, but the Allies helping her have their own agendas. Lotis will, tested, Lotis will be tested with absolute power up for grabs. Who can you trust? In a word, awesome. Yeah, yeah it is hear that. Just pro- art, was, art was lovely, lovely, bright, colourful, action just flowed. And... Um, the action never let up. Do you know what I mean? It was just, it was just a fun ride, and I just think um, there's comics that I like that are kind of really, I say deep. Like I got to really think about what I read and I have to reread pages and really try and soak it in and stuff like that. Warren Ellis, I'm looking at you. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I have to almost read the comic twice to kind of understand it. Whereas what I love about Finn Voltaire, and it's not dissing Finn at all. What I love about Finn Voltaire is again, it's that kind of what I like to say, cup of tea and a biscuit comic. Where I could just sit down after a hard day. Love it. Cup of tea and a biscuit comic. Get myself Brilliant. a cup of tea, pack of biscuits, put my feet up and just and just soak myself in some pulp adventure. So I can't recommend uh, this one enough. So that's, yeah, Athena Voltaire and the Sorcerer Pulp. Nice. Uh, I read a, a Marvel comic by um, Tanahisi Coates. Oh yeah, and Butch, Butch Guais and Yona. Hello. Um, so it's, well, it's Black Panther and the crew. Oh, I heard about this one. It's, so the heroes involved are Black Panther, Storm, Luke Cage, Misty Knight, and Manifold. You heard of Manifold? No. He's I think he's an Australian Aboriginal oh. guy who who's moved to Harlem. Cool. And uh, he can he does teleportation stuff. And I have to admit, it was a bit where he was fighting some, uh, they're called the Merry Cops, and they're like robots, really. Basically, they're kind of you know, your cheap man sentinels. Right, I got you. But, um, so he's fighting them. And the way they drew it, and they did it, him using like, you know, just opening a portal big enough to put his stick through and hit one and stuff like that. And it was it was nice. It was cool. But um, yeah, so... The blurb is, the death of a Harlem activist kicks off a mystery that will reveal surprising new secrets about the Marvel Universe's past and set the stage for a huge story in the near future. Fear, hate and violence loom. But don't worry, the crew's got this. They are the streets. (laughs) (laughs) Why are you laughing? I I just like that. (laughs) Yeah, I got... I enjoyed it, okay. but I got a lot of. Oh, I got. I came back with going, what? Hey, eh? now, all right. So I had a baby four weeks ago, so maybe my head's not in it. But each, um, it's six issues collected, yeah. and each issue is is narrated by a different hero. Okay. I, I I don't know where my head was, but it took me a little while to work out that each, it was <laughs> it was a different hero each time. <laughs> so I was getting really confused. Okay, what this don't make no sense. Oh, this one, this this comic's focusing on this hero. Right. So essentially, it focuses on one, and then that one well, that one interacts with another one, and then that passes on until they all come together. Oh, okay, yeah, got you. Got so you. it's a nice it's a nice setup. But also, I don't understand why it's called Black Panther and the Crew because the one who's front and center is Misty Knight. Right. She's the one who links them all together. 
Yeah, and she's the one who drives the narrative forward. So I'm like, why? It really disturbed me. Why is it called Black Panther and the Crew? Also, I, you know. Do you think they've Do you think they've done that because that's the known character at the moment? Or? It must be. It must be. It's the only. It's the only explanation. Because even if you look at the, um, if you look at the cover of it, yeah, of the graphic novel, you've got sort of Harlem at night. So it's all dark. It's all kind of dark blue with a cityscape in the background. And in sort of blue shadow, you've got Storm, you've got Luke Cage, you've got Black Panther, you've got Manifold. And right front and centre in full colour is Misty Knight. Right. It is, And I understand if it's a market, but it don't make no sense. Oh, yeah, 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 I see it now, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. You would think it would be Misty Knight and the crew. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. There was a good storyline going on, and a lot of it's done through flashbacks and so on. But uh, I just felt some of it wasn't that clear. Right. And maybe, like I said, my brain's a bit all over the place, so maybe I needed a bit of speed spoon feeding. Mm-hmm. But um, and also the last line of the comic just goes like, "To be it was on par with uh, what's his name, uh, The Rock saying, and now." We rebuild. Right. <laughs> and I was like, and it was quite a bit of that going through. And I'm just like, yeah, I, it was all right. It was all right. It was, it was worth a read, but um, I, I don't find myself shouting about it. Okay. Right then, Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still, all right, Netflix. I'm going to, so here I'm going to applaud Netflix. Yeah, I've got a lot. Right, so I I just turned on Netflix. I was bouncing the baby, trying to get the baby to sleep, and I thought, let me see what 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 are the wife and I going to watch later when the kids are asleep, just to chill out. And I noticed they had a whole heap of new original TV series or stuff that you could. So I was browsing, going, "What's there?" The first one I come across was called Orbiter Nine. Never heard of that. Me neither. Do you know why? What? It's not English. It's Russia. It's a Russian sci-fi movie. Okay, but to be honest, and, go on, go on. And it's about some poor girl, some poor girl who's like in day 7,000 of her solo mission in space. Yeah, basically, she's been there since she was a baby on her jacks. <laughs> and then some engineer comes in and, he's, and she's like, oh, it's the first time I've had a visitor. And he's like, oh, OK. Yeah, uh, I've just got to repair this. And then he goes and he stays and they fall in love sort of thing. And then he then he goes out and he sees him stop leave to go back to his ship. But he's going to go to he steps out of a airlock and he's outside. Basically, she's an experiment. Oh wow. And then he kind of goes to get her out, and then they're all trying to get him and stuff. And I'm like, so but first of all, I was like, hey, this is just great. I would there was no other place I would have discovered this. Yeah. And then so but on your on your say so, I've been watching Timeless. Can you explain what time this is about? Jeremy, basically he's a time machine. This bloke nicks a time machine because he wants to go back and change change history. And uh, there's another time machine that was built, which is kind of like a prototype version, which is called the lifeboat. And uh, what the government do is they put together this sort of team of people to go after the the guy who stole the time thief, effectively, who stole the um, time capsule and you've got a historian who's Lucy you've got White who's like a special forces soldier um, and you've got Rufus who's like a scientist and he's the only one who can pilot um, the time ship and and they basically go after this guy and it's just their adventures trying to catch him and stuff and as the series goes on you realise there's a, there's a much bigger conspiracy going on is that about to sum it up? Yeah, uh, nice Also, before you before you so what you're going to say, it's important to note that Rufus is a brother and they're going back in time. Yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. Pick it up. Right, cool. So I discovered a series called El Ministerio del, del Tiempo. Oh, this is the one where they're supposed to have got sued, didn't it? They got su- who got sued? I think the, the time slot got sued. I'm, right, so keep in mind, yeah, El Ministerio del Tiempo, which is Spanish for the Ministry of Time. Yeah. Or the time ministry is in its it's in its third season, right? And it has three Spanish people, <laughs> two two blokes and a woman, going back in time to help uh, protect Spain from time threats, right? <laughs> Which deals with incidents caused by time travel. What sets it, so practically is the same story. <laughs> It is the same story. What sets it apart now, and this is where I think it's clever, uh, the three members of the team is uh, Rodolfo, no, it's uh, Julian Martinez, who's uh, 
He's a paramedic from the 21st century. Oh, nice. And then you've got Emilio Falch, who's a, a late 19th century pioneering university student. Wow. <laughs> from the 19th century. And then you've got... Um, Oh, where is it? Where is he? Alonso do Enterios. Yeah. A 16th century soldier from Seville. <laughs> who's recruited just prior to being executed. And I'm like, that's... So I basically, I watched the first half hour. And I went, I'm all over this. <laughs> but, but, but I didn't even watch that much. I just watched the three of them get recruited from their various time zones. Right. And it's like, the first one, like, you know, the guy's in prison in like 16th century Spain because... You, are you, uh, Alonso de Antirius? Go, oh, don't worry about me, Father. I'm not a priest. <laughs> I come to offer you a choice. <laughs> and um, there's, then there's a woman who's from the from the time ministry who's like uh, from the 1960s and she meets Amelia, this, this woman who's a university student, but she's a university student at the time when women aren't really expected to learn. Right, and yeah. she's looked down on for learning. And she's basically, this woman's like, I long for a time where, where women can prove they're the equal of men. He goes, ah, you could be what we're looking for. I offer you a choice. <laughs> oh just like, that's what I'm saying. I just thought, that's a nice, that's a nice switch, man. I like that. So literally, I've watched the first 10 minutes and um, I'm all over that. But I'm just saying, thanks, Netflix, because without, without that platform, without them going... Let's put some of these on. Let's take a risk, see what happens. I love this idea of, of seeing sci-fi from other other countries and seeing different takes on it and different styles. That's not just an American star or an English star. I, I love that. And it's all in subtitles. Both the film and this thing I've mentioned, the subtitles, I, I can live with that. So, yeah, that's just me going, go on, Netflix. Well, again, it's like that... Um, oh, is it... Oh, is it Dark? That's what it's called? I think it's called Dark. dark yeah, yeah. Like the that, Dark's on there. That's German, isn't it? Yeah, German. and that was brilliant. Yeah. That 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 was brilliant. Still on my list. And but weirdly, uh, I've just added this onto the list quickly, just because you mentioned um, sort of European shows or whatever. Uh, we just finished watching a show called uh, The Chalet, which is uh, I believe is on Netflix. I've just I've just put that on my list, mate. <laughs> all I'll say is this, this is how C described it. She said basically it's Harper's Island without the jokes. <laughs> I looked at that and I went, that's like Harper's Island. And I watched the trailer and I went, oh, no jokes, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, it, yeah, it, when, it, when, when things start to kick off, you're like, okay, this is exactly like Harper's Island. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit that's, of a slow start I, and then suddenly people start dropping like flies. <laughs> I'm just like, wow. But also, it looked like one of those things like, once the season's done, it's just hit it and done. It, yeah, it is. It's, which is, which is, I could use a few more series like that yeah, to be honest. It's basically, it's a, it's a, it's a six episode movie. That's what it is. And it, yeah, I, I, I put it this way: I couldn't see how you could do another season after that, and I was all good with that. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it, it's you know, it's not it's not sci fi or anything like that. It's just it's basically it's murder mystery sort of thrillery and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, it's good. It's it's very good. Um, definitely one to kind of watch a few episodes at a time I think because it's quite slow yeah and then all of a sudden it's just like yeah people start dropping <laughs> yeah. no, okay that's good I'm on that cool. I'm on that cool. oh, I really want to talk where we at because I want to talk solo because I've seen solo now no we've got to talk solo so let me just quickly let me just quickly mention before we get get into it um, two things really quickly oh no no right into the Badlands is back, kick it off. Uh, I've just watched episode two on my train journey today, yeah. and I'm mad because uh, I, do you know what? I went into it a little bit jaded, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be watching it for the action, but I can't really see where they're going to go with it now. And I found a storyline that's working. It's working. It is working. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. Um, and also, like I said, I. It's funny because I watched them. Um, they put a little clip out from Luke Cage season two, and there's like a fight scene in it with, with um, Colleen, who was in Iron Fist and Misty Knight, and they're fighting some guys in the bar. It's a good fight, but as, again, I've just come off the back of watching it in the Badlands, and it was like they were fighting in slow motion. Do you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? And I'm just like, man, I tell you, it's in the Badlands, man. As I said, they don't mess. I think it's episode three or four. There's a fight scene in that, and I've watched. 
a week don't go by, I don't rewatch that fight scene. Seriously. All I'll say is you watch for the kid with the t- you've already seen him, the kid with the two swords. Yeah, yeah. You watch for him, man. There's a there's a fight scene he has. But even that, I mean, in the first, the opening credits of uh, episode one, where it's like uh, that flag bearer on the battlefield. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And she was just going through people. Yeah. No, oh, it was quality. So yeah, so that's it's a Badlands season three. If you know, if you've never got on that show, you like action, get on that show. So that's on Amazon Prime. Really- that one. Um, yeah. I'm going to leave some of the other stuff I wanted to mention to the to next time we record, but I've got to quickly mention this show before we get onto Solo, just because we have a lot of people who aren't in the UK listening to us, so you need to get on this show if you like. I know exactly where you're going. So this show is called <laughs> it's called Bulletproof. What, Bad. What's Bulletproof, Dave? Bulletproof is what would have happened if me and Barry joined the police. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's that simple. <laughs> it's that simple. It is proper North London banter. Yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? It's I, I actually surprised if anyone who's not around our age likes it. Who's not around our age and from London? Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, it's got. I mean, it, even though most of it's filmed in Liverpool, yeah, it's had. I think it's had quite mixed reviews. That's because they don't understand, man. Yeah. But I, I, I can't get enough of this show. I love it. I love it. And like I said, any show which actually shows people properly seasoning chicken, I'm all in. For a start. For a start. <laughs> but yeah, it's... And it's, just, it's some of the banter just cracked me up, man. And it's, some people have called it um, basically UK version of Bad Boys. Uh, that pretty much sums that, it up. That pretty much sums it up as far as I'm concerned. But it's like some of the comments against it is like, oh, it's... You know, they're not following proper police procedure. You're not gonna have you're gonna have coppers with guns running around the streets of London. It's just like, oh come on. You know what I mean? Yes, you're right. You're right. Uh, your problem. <laughs> Good point. And your problem? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like it's like you don't watch the episode of the Sweeney back in the day or the professionals. The Swe- yeah. Well like I said to you we were chatting. Look, look, CSI is one of the most popular police shows in the world, and that is full of nonsense. Yeah. Chock a block. Full of nonsense. They don't stop anyone. Exactly. Exactly. No, I, I, I just think the show's boom. Love that show. Yeah, right there with you, man. Um, and it stars uh, uh, Ashley Waters and... Um, Noel Clark. Noel Clark. Of Doctor Who fame and Star Trek fame and Kid Hood fame and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And the, and the, I think the banter comes with real, but it, but it generally come across like mates in it as well, which is what... Works. Proper mate, do you know what? It's it's um someone put a post up and it goes five signs of how to tell you're in a bromance, and it basically just took five clips from Bulletproof. <laughs> <laughs> it was quality because I mean they got it. There's a lot of love between, them. and you just feel it. You feel it. Yeah, but it's like you know. I don't know if I just a bit in, but I think it's in the last episode where um one I can't think of their names in the show. One's called Bishop, isn't it? Yeah, that's Noel Clark. Yeah, I can't think the other guys. But Bishop, had, he'd, um, he's staying with um, Ashley Waters' character at the moment because he's, he's a fool, you know, cause things have gone wrong yeah. with his relationship. And then he brought back another woman back to the house. And then the next... I was just about to talk about yeah, that. The <laughs> next morning when they get up and she's there and he's kind of, he goes in to see him and he's like, what's wrong with you, man? What are you, what are you bringing back? How come you bring back a woman? It's like, I've got kids, man. What's wrong with you? She's, she's, she's dead. You know what I mean? Next door. You know what I mean? Half naked. And then he's kind of like, you know, what, what, what color, what color are the kids? He's like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, 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 the, yeah, the black. <laughs> they just bump fists. I'll probably take that down, <laughs> but that I was in tears, man. <laughs> man. Uh... It was a bit when the, the police captain is like mature, you know, mature woman, and she's like, she's bawling them out. She's properly calling them over the coals. And he goes, oh, bruv, when she gets angry, you know, because don't go there, man. Because no, would you know? And he was like, <laughs> I was, I was like, he just cr- oh man. And then they go, there's, a, there's like a bank robbery, and they get into the bank, and uh, and and then they go, um. We know this looks confusing, but we are the good guys. 
It's like a bit when they're trying to commandeer a guy's car and he goes, this guy's got, police, we need your car. Goes, you don't look like police. I was like, <laughs> shut up. And I've said, we all know, yeah, shut up. We all know what's going on. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So, shall we uh, move on? We are going to talk solo i got to see it um on its um on the preview in this country two days before it was released uh but i haven't had a chat i put uh, my first impressions out on facebook it's on our youtube channel um and barry you saw it uh i saw it on i saw it on my birthday for it's it's funny actually because i had a choice between going to see it or going to see infinite war again okay and it was Sue, actually, because I was all up for going to see Infinity War because I love Infinity War and she hasn't seen it yet, you know. And because there'd been this kind of taste in my mouth with Solo, like, I'm not sure, and, you know what I mean? And I'd, I'd mm, kind of mm. made up my mind that I was gonna, it was going to be a DVD watch. Well, you know what? The only reason I went out of my way to see it is because I got a free ticket. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And, you know, and it's not done very well at the box office. No, um, it has underperformed, which I have to say is a crime shame because I don't know what, obviously people are entitled to ODPs, but you know, I don't know what people talk about because I had that much fun in the Star Wars in a long time, man. For real, man. I, 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 do you know what? When I left, I thought I enjoyed that. I mean, when I left Rogue One, I just wanted to talk about it all the time. Mm-hmm. With Solo, I didn't really feel that same kind of burning joy and passion. But I came out going, that was a solid movie that I really enjoyed. But I realised a couple of weeks later, it's still in my head. I came out of that. that Rogue One was good. I really, really enjoyed Rogue One. Yeah. Mm. But I always knew where that film was going to end up. Does yeah, that yeah. make sense? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Basically, it's telling the story of how they got the plan for the Death Star, you know. So for me, it was quite nice to go in to see, uh, for want of a better word, a solo film where like I didn't know what the story was going to be. Yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, to get to get the negatives out of the way, my fears were um, confirmed in terms of, oh, are we going to spoil this? Good point. Uh, no, not yet. Okay. Okay. Um, well, let's start. Let's start at the beginning. Uh, well, basically, start with what you did like. What did you absolutely love about this film? What stood out? I mean, you, you loved it, but what was it that made? What it I film? loved about this film was is that it was just fun. It was just mm. fun. It, it was a essentially it's a heist movie meet Star Wars. Yeah. I mean, what's not to love, man? It, it was just it was just fun, and everyone just looked like they were having fun. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it just seemed to complete opposite to all the stuff that I'd heard about behind the scenes stuff and like the first directors got sacked and had to bring in Ron Howard at the last minute and acting coach for the guy who plays Han Solo who I thought was wicked. I thought he was wicked. Yeah, yeah he was good. Um, I thought he was wicked. Um, the What you said to me about Lando, it's not a spoiler, but you know, is the fact you don't see him. You hear him first before you see him. Mm. And what you said to me is you can't not hear him speak and not think of Billy D. Williams. Donald Glover he, hit it he, out he nailed, the park. It, he nailed it. He nailed it, man. He killed it. He was to me. He was. He was. He was the star of this movie, man. Well, he, he said, "Well, I think they both." I really, really liked the guy who was solo, right? And I yeah. really liked Lander. But what I liked about both of them were they were their own. Characters, they weren't just doing impressions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So mm. it's like sort of way, way back in the day when they did the little origin for Indy in Large Crusade and River, River Phoenix was playing a young Indiana Jones. There was something, the way he did the mannerisms and the way he spoke, you knew he was Indiana Jones. You know, you, yeah. you know what I mean? And I think that's what these guys were doing. There was just little mannerisms that they were doing, little turns of phrase We like, that's a young Han Solo, that's a young Lando, I'm all good. And their relationship worked kind of like, a bit like a buddy cop, you know what I mean? Like a sort of buddy movie type thing. But also, um, Chewie. 
Right. So this, for me, this is one of the big things here is that I've always liked Han and Chewie's um, relationship. But for me, ha- Chewie's always come over as a sidekick. Where in this movie, they were partners. And you could see the bond between them clearly. Yeah, and the way they would the way they would just chill out together and chat while looking over the, the view and whatever. I was like, yeah, no, they get each other. And it this is where you just really saw that relationship truly come into its own. And I I have to applaud the way they the way they played that. Mm. I have to. Uh, also as well, my worry was the Han we got in this movie was going to be really, really different from the Han in Star Wars. And it mm. would be like the journey of how he becomes the kind of scoundrel character that we know in Star Wars. And that was my worry. But actually, he was pretty much the scoundrel we knew it was re- yeah. from, from yeah. day dot. Just a bit more optimistic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, just, yeah. they just took some... A bit more bright eyes. Yeah, a little bit more. But not too much. Do you yeah. mean? So, so I, always, I always wanted out of a Han Solo movie was basically Han, Chewie, Lando and whoever just having a, you know what I mean, doing their own thing, having a heist thing and not and it not being bogged down with like prophecies and Jedi and Empire and whatever. And that's what I got. There was yeah, a- we've said for a long time, it's a, I mean, we've always said it about Star Trek as well, I think, that it's big universes. Let's explore other quarters. Yeah. yeah. And I felt more so than... In some ways, more so than the new films, um, by new films as in uh, Force Awakens and Last yeah. Jedi, I feel like I could watch Solo and then put Star Wars on straight afterwards. You feel like you could? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel uh, the same way. I feel like I could have watched Solo, then watched Rogue One, then watched Star Wars, and I'm all good. Because the other thing I quite liked was there was a lot of practical effects in it. Mm. So, it, so the, it was a very grittiness. There wasn't a lot of there was CG, but it wasn't overused. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what you something you said, I think I agreed. It, it gave you a kind of which we've not really seen before. I think when you watch Star Wars, we only see the Empire through the lens of the Rebellion. Mm. And the only reason we know, I mean, obviously we 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 get a sense if we go on, but. It is largely that opening crawl in Star Wars that tells you that the Empire are the bad guys. Yeah. But we don't necessarily get the same... We don't get a sense of what it is to be living in a universe controlled by the Empire, um, which is what I think Solo does. Yeah, absolutely. You just, the place was ripe for a rebellion. Yeah, yeah. Couple of, there, was a, there was a couple of clunky things which I was always worried they were going to stick in there, like, this is how Han did this, and this is how Han got that. And and they were clunky. And they were clunky, and I just... And it uh, didn't need And it. It, was a, it was a couple of things, and you said it goes, not everything has to be connected. You don't have to connect all the, no. the, all the dots. No. And there's, I think there's two things in particular, which I'm not going to mention because we're keeping it spoiler-free, that I was like, really? And it was also... And I think the biggest problem is this... Um, so I've seen a few people say that it was a it was a bit of a love letter to the EU, as it not the European Union, the um, extended universe mm-hmm. or expanded universe, whatever they call it. Um, and there's something that happened in there which had a lot of people in the screen. I was in going, what, 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 what? No, that that how's that happen? That can't be because blah blah blah. And the people that got it were people who'd watched Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. So the question is, but not everyone has, has done that. And the question is, should they have to? So, um, so, here's what, so when you got to that bit, two things, two things happen afterwards. So obviously, um, Sue watches these films with me, but she's not invested. You know, she she wouldn't consider herself like a big fan in the same way. Yeah, you know. Um, and when we got to that particular bit, I personally, I was I was annoyed. More than anything, because I was like, yeah, it, was com- it was completely unnecessary. Didn't need it. You had a you had a good solid film. Why you got to stick that in? It just and it just took me out of it because I was because then I started to ask questions to myself about how how has this happened? Do you know what I mean? Um, mm. And then when we came out, Sue asked me a few questions about it. I sort of said, and she was like, well, "That was a bit of nonsense, didn't really, was it?" 
Not well. Do you know what I mean? said. And I, and I said to some of the other little nods and stuff, and she sort of said, "Well, to be honest, yeah, it was all a bit, but I, I don't really care to be honest. I just really liked the film. I thought he was a great Han Solo, and I thought there you go. Sometimes that's how you got to look at these things. Um, yeah. But I do think sometimes it's almost like you got they got to trust themselves more. Yeah. Trust the story that you're telling. That you don't need to tie everything up in a neat little bow. Absolutely, wasn't wasn't necessary I don't know if John Williams is doing the the sort of third and final um, film but if he's not scoring it get John Powell John Powell was the guy who scored Solo that was a wicked yeah, music it soundtrack was. it was um, I've been listening to it on Spotify all week it is wicked wicked so yeah I'm gutted I'm gutted it didn't do well man because I, I really enjoyed it and I would have quite happily I would have taken a couple more solo films. I've got to say, uh, no, absolutely, absolutely, because it's it's who don't love a heist movie. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's that's what they're going to be. They're going to be it's a job. Yeah, <laughs> it was a, I mean? and there was no like what I liked about it. It was like there was no interstellar stakes. No, they just had they had a job to do. If they didn't do the job, they were going to be in shit. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, Paul Bettany was good. I thought I didn't even know he was in it. Yeah, he was. He was a good villain in it, man. He was a good villain. They, everyone, yeah. everyone was good in it, man. He had a good look, and the, the guy who's kind of Han's mentor. He had a good look crew as well. One of the things that typifies Star Wars for me, and none of them quite got it as good as the first one, which is why it's still my favorite movie. Is you introduce people for five minutes and make me care of the care about them. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know I mean they did that at the end of Star Wars with all those the rebe- rebellion pilots and they and they did it with um, uh, Beckett's crew yeah as well so apparently the character of Beckett was based on Long John Silver oh I could see that yeah I could see I that know. and there's something I saw it says um, and I'm trying to remember now it goes uh, Warwick Davis reprises his role from the film The Phantom Menace as Weasel Oh, is he playing the same? Because obviously I spotted him in it. I didn't realise he was the same role that he was in. I, I can't remember his role in uh, Phantom Minutes. Let's be honest, there's not much about that film. <laughs> the, the evolution of his character was that was to make him a more smarter scoundrel. And yeah. slightly more ruthless. So, when you sh- so, so he still always had that heart to him. And I think the minute you meet him in Star Wars, you kind of know pretty quickly that he's got a bit of heart to him. Yeah. Absolutely. You know I mean? So yeah, yeah. Tough film. I know. I really enjoyed also, it. Like you say, proper driving, proper driving in that million Falcon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I like, I like the way how it kind of like because I remember going, there's something about this Millennium Falcon that ain't right. That's not the right shape. Mm. Oh, I see. It was nice. It was yeah. It was a good film, man. It's a good film. I'm, I'm also, sorry. like you say, it's a shame it didn't do well. Yeah. Because like I, I could handle, go, and it's interesting, you know. You go back through Geek Syndicate, and you see us going. There's no need for this. There's no point to it. What's the point? We don't need an origin story. Oh, blah, 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 blah. And now we come back going. You know what? I could handle a couple more yeah. of those. Because <laughs> I feel they've done. Because even though it was an origin, it didn't. It, it didn't feel as it. Because it didn't start out of him like ten years old and blah blah. He was kind of already. Yeah. Do you know what? It felt to me like a Han Solo adventure. Yes. Yeah. And rather than an origin story. And there's things about the origin. And actually, the things that were blatantly origin, we found it hev- we found heavy-handed and clunky. Yeah. You know, they could have done without. It's just, uh, you know, just an adventure. So if, you, if you've not seen it, uh, I would recommend it. Go in, thumbs up from me. You know, maybe thumbs up for me. Just go in there, you know, just enjoy yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. right. Well, I've got to get on. Me too. So, you know the score, people. Check out the website, geeksyndicate.co.uk. Tell us what you thought of Solo or any of the TV or comics that we've talked about by sending us an email at thegeeks at geeksyndicate.co.uk or telling us on Twitter. Uh, and don't forget to check out our Facebook page. We're all over the gaff. Um, so, till next time. Uh, and once more, a big thank you to all our Patreon supporters up until now. Um, can't thank you enough. Yeah, big love. Big love. But until next time, Geek Syndicate, we out. out.